हेलो
I would like to start in the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most beneficent. Ladies and gentlemen, a very bright morning to everyone. I welcome you all in the productive seminar of human rights violation in Indian occupied Kashmir and our responsibilities. I overwhelmed with gratitude for entering me this opportunity to moderate this session. Prior to go through some in prior to go through the light on the Kashmir dispute, I would like to call upon Mr. Hafiz Muhammad Kamran to recite few verses of Holy Quran. Mr. Hafiz Kamran, please come here. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Sadaqallahu 
وَبَلَّغْنَا رَسُولُهُمَّ بِالشُّ الْكَرِيمِ جزاك الله I have request kindly switch off your mobile As we all know the Kashmir conflict remained a bone of contention between India and Pakistan since its inception. We have fought two wars exclusively concerning Kashmir and firing a line of control from time to time. Stable South Asia cannot be ensured without evolving a solution of the Kashmir to the full satisfaction of the people of disputed territory. In this connection, we should raise awareness about the solidarity of Jammu and Kashmir, what had happened recent and past in the Indian held Kashmir by the Indian governments. In this regard, every day should be the, soli should be the solidarity day of the Kashmir. Every day should be should be the day to raise the awareness about the human rights violation in Indian occupied Kashmir. I will not take too much time of my speakers, respected speakers. I request to Muhammad Adri Sabasi kindly talk about the human rights violation and give the introductory remarks. Thank you. Honorable President, uh, respectable speakers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 10th of December 2017, International Human Rights Day. And we are holding this event to commemorate the International Human Rights Day and to identify our responsibilities in relation to massive human rights violation committed by the India in Indian occupied Kashmir. Human Rights Day is celebrated annually across the world on 10th of December every year. The date was chosen to honor the United Nations General Assembly's adoption and proclamation on 10th of December 1948 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is uh, termed, briefly termed as UDHR. The first global enunciation of human rights and one of the first major achievements of the new, newly established United Nations. The formal establishment of Human Rights Day at the 317th plenary session of the General Assembly on 4th of December 1950, when the General Assembly declared the resolution 423-5 inviting all members and any other interested organization to celebrate the day as they saw fit. Ladies and gentlemen, the day is normally marked both by high-level political conferences and meetings and by cultural events and exhibitions dealing with human rights issues. In addition to it, traditionally on 10th of December every year, the five-yearly United Nations Prize in the field of human rights and Nobel Peace Prizes are awarded. Many governmental and non-governmental organizations actively participate in human rights activities, also scheduled uh, special events to commemorate the day, and do many civil and social cause organizations of Human Rights Day is the day in 1948 the uh, United Nations Assembly adopted the year resolution as we have discussed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Kashmir conflict is basically the cause of case of human rights and humanitarian law. Unfortunately, due to one reason or the other, we are not able to project these violations before international community so as to get their support. It is a case of divided families across the line of control. It is the case of right to self-determination. Human rights violations are frightful extrajudicial killing, torture, rape, abduction, arson, arbitrary detention, etc. Since 1989, more than 100,000 Kashmiris have been 
have been killed and they have lost their life. Indian forces routinely commit war crimes with complete impunity under emergency, so-called emergency uh, and terrorism laws. Apart from the magnitude of the violence unleashed by the Indian military force against peaceful protesters in Kashmir, the most significant aspect of the situation is the acute suffering of the whole population caused by frequent curfews, disregard of normal life, arrests, detention, and sometimes disappearance of innocent civilians by the authorities. The situation is unprecedented in the South Asian subcontinent and with a few parallels all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, before asking others about their responsibilities, let us share what we have contributed as the Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Cell. Uh, we have launched in this year, I am talking about this, the performance of this uh, Liberation Cell in this year, that we have launched an intensive student awareness campaign all over the Azad Jammu Kashmir and we have been celebrating all days which have any slight significance towards the Kashmir cause or Kashmir liberation movement. Uh, we have projected human rights violation through exhibitions, social media besides electronic and print media. We are regularly providing briefing to national and international delegates visiting to Azad Jammu Kashmir. Now, we are planning to start an electronic lobbying campaign with the help of university students on Kashmir cause so as to approach each and every important personality and institution all over the world to muster their support for this cause. Recently, on request of liberation cell, the Azad government of state of Jabur Kashmir has constituted a committee to review and enhance the contents of Kashmir liberation movement and Kashmir cause in the syllabus of uh, uh, school and colleges from class 1 to 12. We have divided this debate into uh, six themes, six sub themes. Uh, three of them are descriptive, and three are, and two are the prescriptive. The descriptives include the overview of human rights violation in Indian occupied Kashmir, legitimacy of freedom struggle in Indian occupied Kashmir under international law the suffering and resi resilience of women in Indian occupied Kashmir and the prescriptive two uh, sub-themes, the advocacy and awareness about the human rights violation in IOK and the evolving and, and effective strategy to project Kashmir dispute as a case of right to self-determination. I hope that this discussion would be fruitful and would also enhance the understanding of the humanitarian and human rights aspect of on the, of the Kashmir cause. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Muhammad Adri Sabasi, sir, for giving a comprehensive view about the Kashmir Liberation Cell Services. Now I, I would request to the administration kindly play our documentary. in 70 seconds. I gazed through the morning mist of Wurra Lake and the prism of time spread over six decades. My death mutilated by India, my graves arise by India. Ladies and gentlemen, the spillover of the Kashmir freedom The first one started after the ill-reputed fake elections in 1989. The years to follow saw an uprising in the form of Kashmir freedom struggle. Thousands were killed and thousands migrated to Pakistan. Tappan Bose, Secretary General South Asia Forum for Human Rights, correctly summarizes the apathy of Kashmiris faced in 90s with a period of continuous crackdown between the years 1990 and 1996, no Kashmiri home was safe. It is said that the Indian Army entered every home, shop and school, beat up people in the school, staff utensils, clothes and furniture, burned down markets, took away young men, most of whom 
and experienced humiliation which has few parallels in recent history. This is the only phase of India Kashmiris have witnessed most of the time. Police are using rape as a weapon against people in places like uh, in Chhattisgarh or Kashmir or Manipur and so on. It is legitimately being The civilized world needs to understand that broken promises, lack of respect for humanity, and brutal operations are leading the region towards an army. With no media policy in Kashmir Valley, along with the blocked social media websites, India trying hard to hide the facts. It seems that voices from Kashmir cannot be silenced. India made me blind when I remind your resolutions. Who made you blind, United Nations? 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 Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Raja Muhammad Sajad Khan. Raja Muhammad Sajad Khan is working as a director of Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Cell. He is also author of several books in which Kashmir Ek Tarikhi Jaiza, Mutalia Kashmir, Kashmiriyat, History of Kashmir Dispute, 1827 to 2014.